Welcome back, everybody. Hey, are you interested in high-quality German portable typewriters like I am? Well, of course, you may know about Olympias, but there's also this brand of typewriter called the Voss. So a few weeks ago, my friend Kevin and I got together and we reviewed his Voss typewriter. Kevin has been in the process of trying to assemble a really great collection of portable and semi-portable typewriters and uh, this is one of these machines. What a great machine. Check this out. I discovered this. Uh, I've seen pictures of him before looking around and stuff like that. Hadn't really uh, investigated much about it. John Lewis's uh, business, I went in there uh, a couple weeks ago. He had just gotten out of his back room, his collection to clean up to sell this Voss and actually another Voss too. It's a slightly later model with a few differences, but very similar. So I'll oh, try it, see what you think. So I tried it and this struck me as, you know, when you're looking for the ideal typewriter, you know, the one that you want to write with, the one that inspires you every time you sit down and this is it. And it really struck me as that way. It's a beautiful looking typewriter. It's not black, so it's not the old fashioned. This is right out of the 50s. Little hint of Art Deco with the, the raised panels and all that. Fascinating to me is that it is a medium portable. Instead of making a medium portable, and then what Olympia did was uh, go and start making a smaller version, the ultra portable size, Voss decided that instead of going that direction, they would go to the direction of making a slightly larger medium portable that we would also double as an office typewriter. So this really is a combination office and portable. So in that case, it becomes kind of the luggable size because it's quite heavy duty. High quality manufacturing, probably as high as Olympia, uh, maybe even higher because everything, the chroming on it is just incredible. The quality, the manufacturing, um, as Joe's circling around and showing different aspects of the, of the machine in general, you can see uh, just the quality of the machine here in the, uh, along the segment. They had this uh, metal piece here to absorb the impact of the type bars coming up. And it's not just a wire like it is on some of the Japanese uh, brother models. Kind of a spring steel that's, segment, that's its own segment. This is the metallurgy. I'll bring up one of the type bars here. And you can just see, even though these aren't chromed, they're a high chrome steel rather than carbon steel. Just no rust or anything on it, just really high quality. Yeah, let's tip it up on the edge here. We can see this heavy-duty casting. So this is cast uh, alloy of some yeah, kind. Of some kind. Right, and then the inner chassis, chassis there you go. Is, is cast that's then machined somehow. There's and, machining marks on it also. And if you'd looked at some of the things when we did uh, the Groma Calibre, the cast body was also the chassis. It doubled. Whereas this Voss, it's two separate items. So you don't have a sheet metal body. You have a cast body around a cast frame. So it's really heavy duty. Yeah. And it just... And uh, it, your escapement is right there. Yeah. Easy to reach. Easy to reach if you need to make adjustments on it. Everything actually is pretty easy to reach if you needed to adjust the on foot, yeah. on feet. All the type bars and linkage is all covered with this. It looks like a black paint, but it's like it's a heavier coating. I mean, it's a, it's a really high quality coating, so you don't have any rust or even really any chance of rust. Almost like an anodization. But Almost like anodized, but it's on steel rather right. than aluminum. Right. And uh, it's and it's it's deeper in color than what I would consider a bluing, like you yeah. would see on uh, for gunsmithing, yeah. where they blue a lot of things. It's a, a thicker, stronger, more durable coating. Yeah, look at these. And then here in your cast part here, the space bar, the movement. They have these inset felt pads. Yeah, to absorb the impact of the space bar coming in. That could be replaced with yeah. airs. And you can see there's wear yeah. uh, on this one here over the years. It's taken an imprint or an indentation in that. Yeah. But it's still quite serviceable. The uh, rubber feet are pretty hard, but they aren't breaking apart. And yeah. they're not squishing like some typewriters, like right. on that torpedo. Yeah. Um, so they're lasting. And you would want to put this on a typewriter pad anyway on the table yeah. to keep it. Yeah. But it is heavier, so it has a tendency not to wander. The first thing you notice is that you have a slot in your paper table, and that's where your margin 
arrow is. And you set your margin, and you it points to the space where you want it to stop. Yeah. And so, you know, that's really nice. So your margin control is on the back. And the same with the left one, the same way. Your margin control is on the back, and you just move that to where you want. The only disadvantage that I saw with that is that when you move your paper guide, you can actually cover over your margin setting, and mm -hmm. you can't see it. Right. But you know, you, that's one of the idiosyncrasies of the typewriter. You learn to that. So on the paper table, you have a nice paper support. Very much like the Olympias, but, except but no without scaling. The, without the scaling. Without the scaling, yeah. yeah. It goes in there. It's a, a spring release for yeah. the uh, catch. Yeah. And then on this side, of course, you have your uh, carriage release lever, which you have one on both sides. And then here is your uh, paper release for adjusting your paper like that. And you'll notice a slot right there. Well, that slot was meant on the end cover for when you take the end cover off so you can slide it over. Oh, okay. That's what that slot's nice. there. It doesn't really have any feature, so but it's built for maintenance. Built for maintenance being taken apart. Wow. And then if you go over to the far end here, rather than doing a linkage for the tab setting, oh, yeah. they have this button right here, and you take it down like that to set your tab, or you go this way to clear your tab, or, or you can press the whole thing in, and it releases all your tabs. <laughs> Very nice feature, yeah. um, and very straightforward. Why would you do a linkage up by the keyboard right. when you can do it right there, yeah. and yeah. works perfectly well, perfectly good. And the paper bail, this is amazing. Oh, look how the, thick that is. The arms, this the Chrome. thick chromed casting. Yeah. You know, it's, it's almost like a forging, but it looks look like... Look at the heavy-duty spring right there. That's yeah. how thick that is. Just really, really yeah. well done. And then you've got your, you know, a, a ba another extension of your paper table yeah. for erasing table, I right. guess you could call that. And rubber rollers. And rubber rollers. Yeah. And really and nicely spring-loaded, yeah. so you get a, a nice pressure yeah. on that. Your type scale here in the front has a couple of holes to put a pen in, yeah. so you can draw your lines. This bar, this is a piece of uh, heavy wire, goes across for your card holder. Mm -hmm. And then you look at your type guide, and your ribbon lift, and you can see that it's just well made. Oh, and yeah. Just yeah. and really, look at how securely it holds the ribbon in right. alignment right. and all that stuff. These ribbon covers, and this is you got to get a great shot of this, Joe. This is it has a ball bearing in there. So you take this ribbon cover, slide it back, and there it is. So there's your tab on the thing, yeah. and then right Engages there, a ball it's a spring-loaded ball bearing uh -huh. that holds that in. And this is cast, and this whole thing is cast. Uh, and you can see they even made it so you could adjust the height so you make sure that you, you have realign everything. the cover. Realign the cover, make sure that everything lines Sweet. up nicely. Okay. And then it's got, with that, you take a standard spool, which is probably either a DIN size or this American size, either one. Um, it's got a spring loaded mm -hmm. tensioning Whatever. thing for yeah. keeping that on there. And then it goes through a fork for your ribbon reverse. Yeah. And just really nicely straightforward. straightforward yeah. But just it's good, solid design. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have, like on the Smith Coronas, a button for changing ribbon direction. It has, like on a lot of machines, if you need to change ribbon direction, you, you just flip it, yeah. flip it like that if you right. wanted to do it manually. Right. And you can actually reach it. If you look here, you can actually reach that well, that's fork right. you could. with yeah. the cover in place oh, if, you, yes. needed if you needed to. And the left side, same type of thing. Right. And the left side of the carriage, you have a, oh, yeah. a carriage return arm. Yeah. That's so nicely shaped. It yeah, goes just, all the way over to the front uh, top of the... Yeah, it's really thing. sculpted. I mean, yeah. just a really sculpted, beautifully chromed, high-quality machining. Um, you've got your uh, ability here to pull that out, so you have your... Uh, mm -hmm. Your clutch. Your clutch there. It pulls out. Variable this particular clutch. Variable clutch. And then you also have this is your... This button here is your one line... One and a half or two. This uh, is your carriage release lever. Carriage release lever and right there. You have this there. really super heavy lever down here. And this is for releasing your line adjustment, but maintaining your uh, line spacing for okay. ratcheting. Like a temporary. It's a temporary. So it's yeah. not an infinite control. Right. This is your infinite control, and this is your temporary for when you need to do superscript or, nice. or something different. And then if you notice on your margins here, they have these nice butterfly, yeah. fits your finger really nice. It's grooved, textured, grooved yeah. You push that down, and then you may not be able to see it in there, but it actually has a spring-loaded stop for the oh. margin so that it's lined up like this, but then when it hits the margin stop when you're returning the carriage, it'll slide and then come back. Kind of a shock absorber. It's a shock absorber type oh, of thing. Nice. And with that in mind, too, we can't really illustrate it because we have this plate on. We can't yeah. show it. The tabs on this... 
are braked, like a lot oh, of the yes. higher end machines. Go ahead and hit that tab button. So we're here all the way to the, the let's go to the far left. We're going to move the uh, margin release, yeah. and we'll go far left, and then we'll set some tabs. So we're going to do the way over here, one there, and one there, and then we'll see what it does. And the tab works really well, which is on the keyboard. Tab, nice, like that. But you notice how it goes slow yeah. at a nice even pace all the way across yeah. to the end. It doesn't slam. It doesn't slam, and that's because it's got built-in braking. Yeah. Um, there's no drag on the carriage when it's released, so it's not a problem with the machine. It was right. actually designed for, to do that. Right. And there's your typeface right there. And this is a standard 10-pitch, standard pica, so nothing fancy in the typeface. So you have your bichrome setting with a stencil. And your shift, shift lock, of course. And the shift lock is on the left. And it looks like one. each one's independent, so the other button doesn't go down. Oh, yeah, look at that. Right. Very much so, yeah. Tab is right here along with the margin release. Backspace on the left, and it has a number one and a exclamation mark and a plus equals. And it, it's not a half space machine. No. But Joe and I have been discovering that there's kind of a combination yeah. of a... Go ahead and uh, press it down. You press it, it'll move slightly, just a hair, and then the full space. Right. So just slightly in here. Right. And what Joe's discovered is that you, by moving that slightly, you can do a shadowed character. And then typing on this typewriter, it has a great feel. Not as crispy and perfect, which I think they're almost the ideal feeling typewriter is the Underwood portables from the 30s right. that are just this fabulous feel. Yeah. But it has a very nice crisp one. It doesn't go down deep like later Underwoods have, which have this kind of a dead feel at the bottom. Um, which work well, but it just has that kind of a dead feel. Doesn't have that spongy feel that the right. uh, Olivetti's seem to have. Right. Um, so I guess it's very similar to Olympia and some other ones. Mm -hmm. It's just a real nice feel. Does not have any touch uh, control adjustment for that, but it doesn't seem like it needs it. I did notice when I was comparing it to uh, my Olympia SM4 that the keys are slightly further apart than the uh, Olympias are, which are a little bit closer together. Right. One thing that inspires me about these Voss machines is they're just so well built. Yeah. And for us aspiring writers that want to write something, you know, you, you want to sit down and you want to have a machine that doesn't distract you. Yeah. And every machine has its own idiosyncrasies. We've eliminated the distractions of writing something on a computer by writing on a typewriter. Yeah. Um, and what you want to do when you sit down is you want to say, okay, I feel like typing. It attracts me to want to actually start to write. And so then when you start to write, because it, you've got that attraction already, yeah. you start going, and then basically the machine kind of disappears. Huh. It's just your thoughts. You're just working with it, and you have no hindrances, nothing that pops up and says oh, well, i got to pay attention to the mechanics of what I'm doing instead of just writing whatever you're trying to write. And I think this machine goes a long way mm -hmm. into making that that flow where you become part, basically like you're part of one with the machine. Mm -hmm. And everybody's going to have their own uh, attraction to one machine or another and hopefully find that. For me, I think the Voss is as close as the one that I've found with that. The only distractions now are the maintenance issues that need to be done on a machine this old, such as the platen mm -hmm. and fixing the margin mm -hmm. uh, stop. Once you bought one of these machines, you, let's say we were in 1958 and we bought this, why would you ever buy another one? Right. Yeah. You, this is the only typewriter you'd need, really. It's the only typewriter you need. It does everything you want a typewriter to do, and it's, it's going to last. Yeah, I agree. Well, it's a beautiful machine, Kevin, and uh, I do expect that great novel to come out of this machine now. You know, are, are you going to be the one who writes it then? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can. Do it. You can write it. Okay. Well, th thanks you for got your a, You got a good tool here to write it with. <laughs> okay. Well, anyways, this is Joe, and hey, a great machine, a wonderful machine, a Voss. You guys have Vosses out there. You guys have any experience with a Voss? I'd love to hear your comments down below. And until next time, you take it easy. Have yourselves a great day. Bye bye.